Hi, this is Tim Von Reeden with CGCookie.com, and in this quick tip, I'm going to go through creating, saving, and loading custom brushes in GIMP. Okay, let's get started. So in GIMP, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document, and make it 500 by 500 pixels. I'm going to set the re resolution at 300 for each. And I'm making the width and height the same because it's easier to create a custom brush based on those settings. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now from here, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm creating a new layer because when I save out the brush, it's going to save out that brush based on that layer. So if I saved it on the background layer, that background, that solid white, would be included in the brush. And we don't want that. So GIMP has a lot of good starting brushes. And really, you can create an entire piece using the standard brushes that they give you. Um, but creating a custom brush is good if you want to create more of a textured brush for whatever mood or whatever scene you're laying it down. So I'm just going to go ahead and use their standard hard edge brush to create our new brush. So when I click the brush that I'm currently using, the paintbrush settings will come up over here. And this is the standard, but you can edit things like the opacity and scale. But the thing I want to look at is if we open up the brush dynamics menu, you'll see how only the opacity is being affected by the pressure of the tablet. So I can change the size as well. So the harder I press down, the larger it'll get. And I'm going to skip over velocity for now, and I'm only going to worry about random. So what random does is it'll pretty much randomize both the, um, the hardness and, or not the hardness, the size and opacity of your brush. So the other thing we're going to do, because we want it to have more of a scattering effect, is I'm going to turn my apply jitter on, and I'm going to set it up somewhere around 3. So you can see how it creates more of a um, scattering effect than it did before. So I'm going to change my brush size a little bigger. I'm going to go ahead and lay down these circles. And I'm focusing on keeping the edge um, somewhat in a shape, but still have it be kind of an edgy, textured look. So once I'm done creating, or pretty much laying down a basic with my brush, I'm going to go ahead and grab my eraser tool with those same settings on. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it a little larger. Same with my jitter. And I'm going to go ahead and erase and take away some of that shape that I laid down. And I'm doing this to kind of erase that bubbly effect that that edge is giving off and give it more of a textured look. So, I mean, this is kind of a point where you could kind of switch between the two and go back and forth until you found a pretty good um, look to it that you want to save it out. So if I was pretty satisfied with how this was looking and I wanted to use this um, as my template for the brush, what I would do is I would go to File save as and this is where you have to find the brush folder in GIMP so on mine I have to go to file system application find GIMP contents resources share GIMP 2.0 and then finally brushes so I have to go through all of these different um, menus to get to where I want to save this out. So if I name this new brush and before I click save I gotta make sure that the it's saving out as the right file format. So instead of what it's currently selected as I have to scroll down and find GIMP brush and that's a GBR. 
So now when I click save, it'll be in that folder. Oh yeah, before it'll ask me, because since I have multiple layers, it'll ask me if I want to flatten the image or just merge visible layers. But if I do that, see how the background layer will be included with that? So actually, I'm going to cancel this. And I'm going to first turn my background layer off. Or I'm going to make it non-visible. And now I'm going to go ahead and go in to save it. And just like before, go through the long list of folders to find where I save my GIMP brush. And now I'm going to make sure that it's a GBR. And now I can click Save. So now it's going to give me that same message. But if I flatten the image, the background layer could be included with it. So instead, I'm just going to do Merge Visible Layers. So those are all the layers that have the eyeball showing. And since the layer that we created our new brush on is the only one with the eyeball showing, I'm going to choose Export and Save. But before see how there's a spacing I can edit this now but it's not permanent I can edit that in just a sec so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it at that standard 10 and choose save so now if I bring this menu up a little bit so now in the menu the brush might not appear at first but if I go to this refresh looking button, you can see how it added a new brush. And it added the new brush that we just created. So now if I turn my background, brown, background layer back on, change the visibility of that layer off, and then create a new layer to sample the brush that we just created, we go ahead and choose that brush and make sure I'm on a brush. And I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. It's a little big, so I'm going to scale it down a little bit. And you can see how we lay it down. It created, it's laying down that brush that we just created. But since I don't really want the random on anymore, or the jitter, I just want the nice, um, solid brush like that. So that created our custom brush for us. And like I was saying before with the spacing, that can be changed down here under the brush menu. So if I change this to like 50, now see how there's um, a larger gap in between each of the brush laydowns, and that's because there's more spacing to it. So if I change that to one, it'll be a very solid brush. See how it's like smearing? And we don't really want that effect for this brush. So I'm gonna save it at about 20, and that's exactly where I want it to be. So now if I wanted to save the brush out and have it in an external place where if anything happened I could load it back up into GIMP, what I would do is I would first turn off that background layer again, turn on my the layer with the brush on it, go to File, Save As, and instead of saving it in the GIMP on the brush folder, I'm going to go ahead and save it to the desktop. I'm going to save it as New Brush. And I don't have to select file type because I can see up here it's a .gbr, which is the GIMP brush. I'm going to choose save. And I'm going to merge visible layers. Export. Save. So now on my desktop, we should see the new brush .gbr. So if I wanted to load that back into, brush, or into GIMP, I would find the folder where GIMP's brushes are in. So if I go to my folder, Tvun, and scroll down, it would be in my library, application support, GIMP, and brushes. So now if I go ahead and grab that GBR and lay it in my brush um, folder, I can close this if I reopen this. Now when I choose refresh, you can see how it added it again because I just added it to the actual GIMP brush folder. So that's um, pretty much my way of going through creating, saving, and loading a brush in GIMP. I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.